G'day, my friends. This is Marty Ware from Marty's Garden. Look at that lovely bushland behind us there. It's just amazing here where I live here in Clunes in uh, northern New South Wales. And you can see just a little bit of the garden maybe coming through there. Got the tables and chairs and vertical stands and different things setting up. And it's all coming along really, really well. But today, I want to discuss with you a neat trick because many people have problems with, well, around here in Clunes, we have problems with bandicoots. Uh, in other places, you might have problems with wallabies and rabbits and different marsupials and different mammals that attack your crops. And I've made a discovery with the bandicoots. Uh, I've been fighting them off here in uh, on my farm because they dig holes and dig up plants and they want to get in and grab the worms and the compost and different things. And they dig around the plants mostly more than eating the plants, but, you know, they can pull a whole plant out of the ground. And what I've discovered is, was when we had the storm here um, uh, about six weeks back, um, I, all my microgreens were pushed over, and I just grabbed the radish microgreens. I just threw them on the pile where I was digging the gardens, and they burrowed in and made these thick borders. Now, when you stick your hands in there, the leaves are spiky, and they actually like leave little spikes inside your hands, and they do hurt. And I believe that this would do the same thing to many different little animals. And I've also I found that the bandicoots are digging around the radish. Now, it's giving them a bit of a border protection. So this would work. And not only do they, um, you know, provide this, this border, they provide you with radishes. Now, you will get smaller radishes because you're planting, you've got to plant, some quite, plant them quite dense. Um, but, you know, you'll get your seed from it. And you can actually, like, cook the radish leaf. So if you heat it up, those spikes will come off. Um, you can harvest them when they're young. And you'll get the seed as well. So... They also uh, work in compacted soil areas and the root goes down and will break open clay soils and then you can uh, use them as a cover crop. So, you know, they've got a lot of benefits to use and I like to leverage what I do as much as possible because I believe that you get more value for your money and time and that's what micro farming farming's about, leveraging and creating products, product development and using that confined small space to as best as possible. So I'll take you over and show you the uh, radish border now and just give you an idea of what's going on. Let's head off, shall we? Now here's one large radish, it's just on its own and it's huge, it's dwarfed this tomato here which, you know, I'm just blown out by how quickly it's grown. And these flowers are absolutely wonderful. Now, remember I was talking about you can collect seed from them? Well, these guys, these little flowers would be attracting lots and lots of beneficial insects. There's no doubt about that. And would be helping that tomato plant get pollinated. Now, we want to bring the pollinating insects in here because the carnivorous insects will then come in as well and hunt on them. And this tomato will be loving it. Now the only thing is I'm not sure if tomatoes and radish are a companion but it seems to be growing okay beside it and it's very healthy and this tomatoes you can see the picture here through here it's called a berry ripe and they get little like cherry style egg tomatoes with a nice stripe on them so I'm really looking forward to that. Now as we head up the bed you'll start to see where my border is now I've got sunflowers growing here look there's more flowers from that radish now it's just beautiful this is the red the purple sango radish okay guys the one that i grow for the microgreens and i'm just absolutely blown away by how pretty it is i just i haven't even pulled it out i just want to collect the seed from it and see how much seed i get sunflowers they also come over from the storm we're just moving through here you can see another tomato down here this is the black cherry tomato and then we're moving over here now my cover crop has just started to flower up this is my first flower more flowers coming through. In the beginning stages, I thought, oh, there's not going to be many flowers. Uh, you really won't get that many radish seeds. But now I'm like thinking, hmm, you're getting more than what you actually expect. Now, the rad I've got sunflowers just popping up inside this radish border here as well. Now, it's quite thick. And you can see that it's, it's probably uh, close to nearly a metre wide. Now, you wouldn't need to go that wide. You'd probably only need to go uh, half that. And so about half an arm length to make your border, I think, would be enough. Now, you can see these massive big leaves. And I've been told that you can actually harvest and eat these. 
Uh, I haven't tried that. I only eat them as a microgreen. But it's working extremely well. Now, I, I started with bricks first. And because I found that the uh, bandicoots, they just walk straight over top of the bricks. They don't care. But they're not going in there and digging up holes. And it's just working an absolute treat. Now, if we go over here, I'll show you as we head over towards where the worm farm and the sunflowers are now. There's the big worm farm there, the compost worm farm system. There's another tomato, cherry tomato growing in there because they're getting ready for the market. There's more flowers coming up, so I'm collecting a lot of seed. And there's a nice thick border here. Now, this has not been dug up at all around this area by the bandicoots. Now, they were getting in there, so I've had to fill it up with bricks, cardboard. You can see I've thrown a little, like, plastic tray down there, water tray things to cover all that area because they just get in there and make, you know, they nearly dig up that, dug up that whole kale there and it just blows me out. So I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure that rabbits and all those things would not like that. When I stick my hand in here, they feel spiky and I find that they actually like a little bit just got on my finger then and just went in my skin and just tingled. Now that goes into, into their nose or into their nose or onto their face in some way or near their eyes. Well, it's going to do exactly the same thing. So I believe that that's going to work really great. Now, I should have more videos coming up about my tomatoes and things in the future and the Egyptian spinach. If you haven't seen that video before, head over to Marty's Garden in YouTube about growing Egyptian spinach. This is one of the most amazing crops. I'm just still blown away by it. But anyway, just wanted to give you that tip because uh, this is something that will help a lot of people and it's just been something that I discovered on accident. I was researching them as cover crops and then we had the storm and I just sort of threw them down and boom, they just come up all by themselves like that. So, um, yeah, great way to leverage the garden, get some food, keep things protected, collect seed, grow radishes and all that type of stuff. Oh, this is my trusty worm farm. And the big pile, the big compost pile, which has got compost worms in it it's just amazing that's that's what the bandicoots come for a lot of the times actually if we head over we might be able to find a bandicoot hole i slowed them up by putting some uh, pepper in here and they i reckon they got a good whiff of the pepper and um and didn't come back now this was all dug up with holes you can see they've done a little like a hole here and he hasn't found anything to eat so he hasn't gone down too deep if you find something to eat like say in this area here where the compost is I wish he hasn't been in there, maybe the pepper might be working, which is just something would be a sight to behold. And uh, see, so there's another whole radish area there as well. Anyway, this video has gone on for quite a long time. Have a great day. Happy gardening, my friends. Look at that lovely view that I wake up to every morning. Six to seven weeks in, three weeks in the spring. Happy gardening. See you at the next video. If you haven't subscribed to Marty's Garden in YouTube, make sure you do because there's lots more cool stuff coming your way. Bye for now.